How do you really become an expert in Flutter? This video is a step-by-step -step roadmap of how to get there. We are Robert and Tadas, and we've been working with Flutter for over a decade combined. We are both Google developer experts for the last four years and have built a company together around Flutter. In this video, we combine all our experience into a simple roadmap that walks you through everything you need to know to go from beginner to expert in Flutter. This is the roadmap we wish we had when we started. You can download a high-resolution version of this in the description. Let's get started. Before you start with Flutter, you need to learn Dart. Dart is the language powering Flutter, and without Dart, there would be no Flutter. You can think of Flutter as components or widgets that you can use to build an application. These components are built using the Dart language, so having a good understanding of Dart is essential. If you have programmed in other languages, especially other object-oriented languages like TypeScript, you might be able to skip this initial section, since Dart has a very similar syntax. But it would be worthwhile to skim through the syntax to make sure. The Dart concepts you need to understand before you start learning Flutter are variables, types, functions, operators, control flow statements, classes, and asynchronous programming using futures and streams. Once you are comfortable with all of those, we are ready to learn Flutter. The first and most important concept to understand about Flutter is the concept of widgets. If you are coming from React or most other web frameworks, you will have heard of the word components before. Widgets are Flutter's equivalent to components. If you are new to this topic, think of widgets as building blocks for your Flutter application. It's like Legos. When you put the right widgets in the right arrangement, you can build a complete application. Every widget is based off of two root widgets called stateless widget and stateful widget. We will cover the differences between the two later. Widgets in Flutter can represent anything within an application. The most basic widgets are UI components, such as the elevated button widget, which creates a tappable button, or the circular progress indicator widget, which displays a loading spinner. There are also widgets that handle the layout of your application. The padding and margin widgets handle the spacing around your widget. Row and column widgets handle organizing your app into rows and columns. And List View Builder widget creates a dynamically scrolling list of widgets. There are other widgets that take input from the user, like the form and text field widgets. And each of these widgets can be styled using properties within the widget itself. For example, the most commonly used widget is the container widget. This is the most flexible Flutter widget. Here is an example of styling you can apply to a container widget. At this point, you should be able to create and see widgets. The next big skill to acquire is to create different pages and be able to navigate to them. With this, you can build multi-page applications. You can also add packages to your application. There are over 35,000 packages developed by the community to make building your apps even easier. They are all developed by the open source community, including some packages by the Flutter team itself. You can add them to your project using the pubspec.yaml file. Up to this point in the roadmap, it's mostly been about getting a feel for what Flutter is and how it works. Next up is understanding it deeper and really working with it and building apps. We said we would get back to the differences between stateless and stateful widgets. The difference is that a stateful widget holds state, while a stateless widget does not. A state is simply data that can be updated. You can update that data by using set state. As you build your applications, you will inevitably run into issues. Understanding how to debug issues is one of the most important skills to have as a developer in general. Breakpoints allow you to pause code execution. Stack traces let you see the execution path that was taken. DevTools is even more additional tooling provided by the framework to help you debug UIs, app performance, memory consumption, and more. As you are debugging, and in general, you should handle errors that come up in your application gracefully especially when you start incorporating backends. Adding a backend to your application makes it a little more complicated, but it also makes your apps a lot cooler because you can now connect users together. The three main topics to understand regarding backend are user authentication, storing data in a database, and connecting to APIs. Now we move on to the next level of Flutter development where you get to an intermediate level. We've talked a lot about widgets. Widgets, 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 widgets. Everything is about widgets in Flutter. In fact, your entire application is widgets nested within other widgets, a widget tree. Understanding the intricacies of this is critical to really understand how Flutter apps function. As a beginner, you style each component individually. As you advance more and more, you start relying on applying a theme to the entire widget tree to have a more consistent experience across your application. And in general, improving the look and feel of your applications to make them feel premium, including making them responsive 
so they can be used across any device. The key topic here is understanding constraints. The key concepts to remember here is that constraints go down, sizes go up, and parent sets the position. Now we get to our favorite topic, and that's managing data like a pro. Proper state management is critical once you have a larger code base. Sure, to build a small app, you don't need state management. But if you are building valuable software, it's a must. The conversation regarding state management has been focused on using packages until now. But you do not need a package to manage your state. In fact, you can save yourself a lot of headaches by not using one. Flutter has Change Notifier, Listenable Builder, Value Notifier, and Value Listenable Builder all built into the framework. And using these, you can scale up your applications without relying on other people's code. You can use this state management approach with the MVVM architecture. In fact, this is the exact approach recommended by the Flutter team. This is the exact architecture that is used by large companies. MVVM stands for Model View and View Model, which means data, UI, and business logic. The model portion can be separated into repositories, which expose outside data to your app. This outside data should be retrieved through an abstraction layer. Then services are used to handle app-wide state, and all of these can be referenced throughout your application using dependency injection. Now that you are getting deep into the Flutter development world, the quality of your code matters. To make sure the quality never drops, you can write tests. By using the MVVM architecture, testing becomes easy, since most of the logic is abstracted and self-contained. Whether you are writing unit, widget, or integration tests, the dependencies can be mocked or faked. Then you can go even further by making sure your UI looks consistent with golden tests. We had a section learning the basics of backend within Flutter, but with your fancy architecture and tests, we can't let our backend structure fall behind. It needs to be as robust and reliable as the rest of our application. We get there using robust error and retry handling frameworks, and some of these should be handled using interceptors. The basics of navigation can take you really far, but depending on your app, especially if you are using Flutter Web, you might need more complex navigation. This can be done using the built-in Navigator 2. Again, like state management, there are a lot of navigation packages, but we like to build things ourselves so we can understand it and have full control of the code. Now we get to the final pieces of making a production-ready Flutter app. To really add the final sparkle, you can add animations to make your apps feel premium. You can get quite far using implicit animations, which are the simplest to use. As you need more complex animations, you can use explicit animations. And if you really need a fully custom animation, you can create your own using Custom Painter. At this point, you have all the skills necessary to build high-quality, performant, scalable, and maintainable apps. Now it's time to ship them to the app stores. You can do this manually, or you can use CI-CD to automate this process. These are all key topics that you need to understand to become a solid Flutter developer. However, mastery, or becoming an expert, requires experience. You need to use everything you've learned and build projects, make mistakes, and gain that experience. You must ship apps publicly whether just to your friends and family or to the whole world. You must get feedback and keep improving until you become comfortable in your skills. Then you truly become an expert. No matter where you are in your Flutter journey, we teach you all of the topics covered here in depth in our course. It's not just any course. We have coding challenges and quizzes to make sure you truly grasp the topics. We also build three functioning apps from scratch in this course. The first one is a UI clone of X, then a to-do app using MVVM architecture to get you familiar with all the design patterns, and finally an MVVM workout tracker app with a backend that puts everything together. This is the only Flutter course that actually has you write code directly in your browser, verifies that you did it right, and if you didn't, guides you towards the right solution. You also get access to a private community of other people on a similar learning journey. Join today at HungryMind.com. This course is a Flutter course, so Dart is not directly covered. To learn more about the core principles of Dart, click the video on the screen.